I did a combined degree um, at art college and university. And when I finished that, um, I came to London and got involved in partly in working collaboratively with um, people in performance, um, but also doing my own work. And didn't know where anything was going to lead, but very much felt, I want to go on making work, I know that. And at that point, there were quite a lot of people I knew, and we were all living in a very kind of hand-to-mouth way, really, um, in cheap accommodation or short life housing. And the understanding was that you would work to live, but, but also to have time. Time was the really important thing to go on with your own work. And then um, I'd be making my own work, went through different phases of the media I was working with, from kind of wall-based things to um, slide tape, because I'd worked with photography, I wanted to be in control of the imagery, I wanted a, a, a sense of them developing over time, but it wasn't film, it was too expensive, and then I got into installation. And I also worked in performance um, from the mid-80s with Gary Stevens, who was a friend. Well, I did this combined degree, which was actually, it was a, a Scottish MA Ons, Honours, which is um, a kind of stage up from a, an English BA, um, but wasn't a postgraduate MA. It was, a, it was particular to Scotland. And um, if you did painting, it was five years. If you did sculpture, it was six. And you, you did a course at art school, something for that every day and then you also had lectures and tutorials and seminars at university and it was it, the university was essentially history of art but you did subsidiary subjects as well and you could choose those depending on your timetable and in the first year I chose anthropology social anthropology and I absolutely loved it so it was structural interrelationships where and this was a revelation to me and made complete sense that um in, in any culture, all aspects of that culture relate in some way or another. I mean, from kinship systems to um, the, the sorts of beliefs and rituals that people have. I think when I left art school, that, that sense of how you could relate things that weren't necessarily immediately about art in a fine art sense, that became increasingly important to me, to the extent that I, I didn't, when I left, I felt I had to undo a certain amount of the skill I'd acquired. So I worked with very kind of low-key things, putting things together, not actually manipulating them with a lot of skill. Worked with other people, you know, did some work in performance that was collaborative and time-based. I, I think it, 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 and it still resonates with me, I think, that. And that sense in which, for example, um, gardens are... They're part of people's environment if they've if they've got one, and how that they're very much a, a kind of um, reflection of the, who the person is and what they want. One of the really important things about coming here was that there was a garden, um, and I had a child, so you know I wanted it for her too, um, and it's something I've always done, and then it started to become. Um, something where friends asked me to do bits of gardening for them. And um, in 2008, I started it as a business. Um, not, not a kind of um, hugely massive business, but again with the understanding that I needed, I needed more money, um, having been on income support. And I'd, I'd been a lecturer um, through the 80s and into the 90s, and then just couldn't carry on with that when I when I had my daughter um, for lots of reasons childcare costs time uh, preparing all of that and I hadn't gone on consistently with my own practice which to me was always the kind of es essence of why I felt I was able to teach in colleges and why people would want me the fact that I I had this practice was the most important thing so it, it was a way of not going back into that. I felt I, I didn't know how to get back into it. And the longer I was out of it, the harder it was to um, feel confident about doing it again, really. I really liked 
The first person I really started doing it for is a friend. Through gardening for her, um, other people approached me and it was very small to begin with and it started building up. The thing is, every garden's different. I mean, it's obvious but to say, but it's true. And with each person, it's a matter of having a sense of what they want. I, mean, I always say, first off, I realise, what do you want to do with the garden? And, and the best thing is when actually, when I've worked on the garden for a bit, people say, we use the garden so much more. And we actually, there's parts of it we didn't realise we could, we could use. And, and it's kind of brought it to life in a different way. One thing I, I knew was that I, I had a painterly sense. I mean, I trained as a painter and I had the kind of art education where you did kind of train. You just, uh, it was very much skill-based and getting a lot of practice and various things. And I've looked at a lot of painting. And so it's about, um, but I mean, I think any garden designer would say this as well. It's about combinations of different plants, their form, um, how they relate to each other, where they are spatially, um, what they'll do at different times of year. If something loses its leaves, it's deciduous, what have you got that's then going to enliven the garden at that time of year? So the painterliness comes from a kind of composition, I suppose, but also um, colour. With an artwork, you, you end up with something but I also feel that when it's done and it's put wherever it's going, the meaning is absolutely, I mean, it's not even a collaboration. I can't keep controlling the meaning. It's, it's up to whoever comes to the work to make their own meaning. And I kind of trust them enough to be able to do that. You know, I, not everyone will get it. That's okay. And in a way, the gardens are similar in that I'm, I'm doing a certain amount and I can kind of have almost a vision of what the garden could be like, given that someone's given me an idea of what they think they'd like. And I'll try and make that happen, but it's absolutely collaborative in that, you know, they need to be happy as it goes along. I've never stopped thinking of myself as an artist, um, because even when I wasn't making work that was shown, I was doing it in a this sort of low key way, um, and I think it was it's probably a bit like being a kind of resting actor. I kind of thought I will show these, um, and the the problem was that I did so many of of the kind of preliminary bits that they mounted up and mounted up, and then they became a bit in super. And it's like, oh God, now what do I do with them? But I've I've never stopped thinking I was an artist. I don't I don't think I have stopped being an artist. At all. <laughs> <laughs>